Games like FTL incorporated the Active Time Battle System into the roguelike game and has since become its own subgenre. So what happens when we take that system and throw in multiple pop cultural movie references with the world themed around Mad Max the Road Warrior? Convoy. Convoy is in the subgenre shared by FTL and is created by the aptly named Convoy Games. Its story is, of course, quite simple. Your ship has encountered an ion storm and, due to malfunctions, was forced to make landing on a planet called Omec Prime. In order to leave, you'll need to collect four procedurally generated items from a list of six possible. On the start screen menu, you'll see various choices. A tutorial explaining the basics and how to play. Stats will display some playtime information with acquired achievements, and options let you adjust a minimal amount of settings. When starting out, there are three difficulty settings, and like FTL, the difficulty versus rewards are scaled accordingly. When you begin a new game, you're greeted with a side scroll down menu and a center MCV option panel. Both the MCV and support unit options are dependent on which you unlock during gameplay. The first and default choices are the MCV Armadillo and support unit Sidewinder and Bobcat. Take note that the game expects you to play on easy difficulty to obtain the various achievements which unlock more powerful MCV and support units for harder difficulty levels. The default units are not balanced for normal or hard modes, and since achievements don't list which difficulty you've unlocked them, then there's no shame or stigma in going for achievements on easy. In fact, the game expects this. The default units and a few unlocked units are not designed for hard mode. When choosing hard, there are various choices that can get you through. Any combination with the Gila or Devastator tends to be the options expected for hard mode, though the Gila with the Sidewinder or Bobcat seem to be tailored for medium. The two Keeper drones can be ideal choice if you know how to utilize them, though they can remove some of the challenge. For MCVs, any of the last three are ideal choices. For a bit of a challenge, I chose the Gila Sidewinder and to even it out, the Dreadnought Mark II. On hard mode, you don't start with any parts and only 25 fuel. Since the Gila has low maneuverability, I instantly swap its 60mm cannon with the Sidewinder's light missile launcher. Missiles don't need line of sight. Once in the game overworld, you'll see your heads-up display. On the left, it shows the armor and health of your vehicles, as well as the weapons your MCV is equipped with. On the right is a mission objectives panel, beneath which there is an explanation of which colored hexes are associated with each of the three factions, and how the three levels of shading correlate to the general difficulty. You'll also see any extra pieces of equipment you're carrying, maximum of four. Convoy uses an isolated map from which to navigate from. The world itself is always static, layout of roads, land features, etc. The dynamics lie in where radio beacons are situated, and which quest objectives you're tasked with. As you head out, you'll notice your fuel gauge slowly depleting. This rate is constant. The rate of travel is dependent on which terrain you're navigating. You'll learn quickly it's best to stay on flatlands or take the roadways whenever possible. While traveling, you'll notice yellow radio signal tiles, and like it or not, it's best to visit as many as you can. Encounters are the bread and butter of the game, and the more you have, the more parts or fuel you'll earn, and the longer you'll be able to survive. Initially, it's best to use your vehicles as mobile shields, protecting your MCV from damage while peppering them with attacks. The MCV I chose is ideal for offering heavy support fire. Hopefully, you'll find several random encounters via radio beacons or just through the roll of the invisible dice as you travel. Your rewards won't be great, but hopefully they will add up enough to upgrade at your first camp. I tend to upgrade range first, and then try to balance handling and mine guard. Mine guard avoids mines as well as rubble damage, and handling improves vehicle speed while moving positions. You'll find both indispensable. Hopefully through your travels you'll pick up stronger vehicles. Unless going for a specific achievement, keeping smaller vehicles is never ideal, though sometimes unavoidable. You'll also be begging for weapon upgrades via random drops, or at least for sale in various supply camps. Speaking of supply camps, they are generated at the start of every play in random locations. They offer the ability to repair, upgrade, and refuel if you have the parts. The only thing to note is inventory is static. That is, when you check the camp to see what it has to sell, they'll never have anything new even if you buy something. This can lead to some very frustrating or rewarding scenarios when you're either trying to save up for an amazing vehicle or weapon, or at the mercy of the RNGs to supply you with the necessary upgrades. There may be several times in which your convoy is out of fuel and you'll merely be waiting for the next random event. This can lead to very tense moments. The game will never completely strand you. You will always eventually get a random event that potentially can send you on your way, but it's best to try and never run out of fuel to begin with. You can suffer lots of damage to these random events leading to a possible game over.
As you play, you'll notice that slowly the hex tiles begin to shade in darker levels. Eventually, the full map will be covered in high threat tiles. This is the game's arbitrary time limit. If you don't keep pace with the threat level via weapon and vehicle upgrades, you'll be overmatched. Always keep in mind your main four objectives. Waiting a long time to complete them can make it more difficult to do so. Pace yourself, but keep in mind the location of these four main quests. Once you've completed all four, you can attempt to fight the end boss and win the game. While this boss may seem overwhelming at first, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, you'll have to fight two very powerful Keeper drones. Once these are defeated, the main event shows itself. It's a hovering monstrosity with nine powerful segments to destroy. While there are no definite stages to this boss, there are patterns. After a set number of laser beams, mine lane, and missile volleys, two Keeper drones will re-enter the fray. It's best to try and destroy these, or push them into the boss for a cheap, quick death. Keeping the drones on screen can be devastating. Hopefully the battle won't last long enough for a third wave of drones. Once you've defeated all eight surrounding tiles, the boss uses its final beam weapon. This beam locks onto one of your units and follows it around for a set period of time. The best way to avoid it is to stay as far from it as possible and dance around it swiftly while your other units pepper it with support fire. It will be a long fight, and it was a long journey, but with dedication, timing, and practice, we can win Convoy.